Hey guys, this is Brandon at Tailwater Outfitters and today we're tying the badger tail shrimp. Look at this. Do you see this? Look at the movement in this thing, man. The badger tail. Badgers are like mean animals, right? So the badger tail shrimp is a great longer shrimp tie or shrimp pattern. Um, it provides a lot of movement, but the nice thing I really like about this fly is in the fall and the spring when you might you know, be pulling it flat and see a snook or a redfish or something like that. Uh, I can strip this quickly, you know, with the bee chain and still keep it up in the water column like a bait fish. Uh, so it's a great all-purpose fly in that spring um, and fall time for a redfish and snook. So uh, I like to start my thread on anything I tie eyes on at the beginning of the hook. And I'm going to wrap back about 10 wraps. Hopefully that was 10. Um, and then what this does is it kind of allows me to keep my bee chain or my weight. Uh, in this case, we're going to use some medium bee chain uh, in gold. It's going to keep that fairly uniform on the fly so I can expect similar sink rates and the similar sink types out of the fly. Uh, so I have kind of each one marking where I want it. Uh, we're going to lock these eyes in right there on that 10th wrap. some parachute wraps really quick all right and then anytime you lock your eyes in you want to just make sure you can put some pressure on it and it's not going to wiggle uh, or fall out I'll go ahead and trim watch your thread this is important trim out that piece of wire from the bead chain and then we're going to go back to the hook point so you can wrap all the way back wrap just a little bit past to make sure you got a good thread base back here uh, and you want your thread falling right out to the hook point um, and I really like this badger tail fur for any time you're tying a larger, you know, longer shrimp pattern. Um, the guard hairs in this stuff just gives you kind of unreal movement, um, as well as you get a nice natural, you know, coloration and look, you know, from that fur. Uh, so we're going to take, you know, a decent amount of the fur. You want it to be a smidge longer than the hook shank. And I'm going to tie that in coming out the back. And you just want to get those fibers getting trapped. We're going to cover all this up with a brush anyway. So it doesn't have to be the cleanest thing in the world here. I do like to add some legs on this fly. So the legs that I use are the Chacon's regular crusher legs uh, in the sand barred. Give you a little bit of extra movement, especially, you know, our, our redfish here in Tampa really like it when that fly is just sitting on the bottom sometimes. Um, and this badger fur and these legs are really, really good at providing you movement even if you're not moving the fly, which is nice. So we'll tie these legs in basically the same length as the badger tail fur uh, and I always tie my legs kind of on top of the hook shank because I don't want these to foul so what basically what I do is they're slightly off to the side um, and after you take a couple of wraps you can kind of manipulate exactly where you want them at um, but I want them slightly on top and slightly off to the side of the hook shank so that they've kind of got more room to go before they can foul around the hook shank or really mess up your presentation. Um, just give you some good wraps forward just to make sure these are good and locked in and you can trim out that excess. The last material we're going to do, I'm going to clean up this badger tail fur really fast. There we go. The last material we're going to use uh, is EP Foxy Brush in the sand color. Foxy brushes are really, really good material for your shrimp and crustacean patterns. It's got just a subtle amount of flash that I think works really, really well for a redfish here. Uh, and I'm just going to tie that straight in on top. And we're going to keep this pattern, the body of this pattern, very sparse. So make sure those eyes are getting locked in. I don't know if I did a good enough job on that. And we're going to go straight to the front of the fly here. Um, 
just do a little half hitch there just to lock it in so we can rotary tie this. But I actually like to hold my brush at an angle once I make like a good wrap through. Um, I'll hold my brush at a, a slight angle off so that one, you're making uniform wraps and covering the hook shank you know, fairly uniformly. Uh, and two, it kind of keeps you from packing on too much material on this fly because we do want it to sink. So um, you really only did about three wraps behind. And we're gonna do just a couple of wraps to kind of cover up those eyes just a little bit right in front. Trap that. Pull it all back here. We'll take a couple of wraps over top of the brush here. Take your trusty flush cutters and cut that brush out. Um, and anytime we're using an EP brush, it's a good idea to come in with a comb after and comb things out just a little bit. Uh, we'll pull all that back and then you can kind of trim out any wayward fibers like this one here. You can just pull those out. Uh, and I really want this just to kind of taper back, so I'm going to start tighter to the, the front of the hook shank there um, and kind of trim my way to where the body is just a little bit wider coming back. And you'll get this nice kind of shrimpy look. And you can also strip this quickly like a bait fish. I've had fish eat, eat this fly both ways. So it's, a, it's kind of a, a neat little universal pattern you can tie up. Um, and just so you get kind of just a little bit of a shrimpy kind of tapered body there. And the last thing we'll do since this is a redfish fly is we'll add a weed guard. Uh, this is 25 pound mason hard mono that I just pre-cut into some strips. If you really want to get bougie, you can run these under some hot water and it'll straighten them out. Pro tip from Brandon there, you're welcome. Match the tip down with my pliers here. Just to give yourself something to tie into. Get this one here out of the way, that's making me angry. There we go. I'll set this on top as long as I can hold on to it. Tie it straight into the front of the hook shank and you really want to cinch this down good. So if you trap a couple of fibers, that's okay. Um, you can come back in and clean it up later. Uh, and then I'm going to pull my weed guard forward and take a few wraps behind it so that it really stands up. Usually takes about five wraps or so. That's pretty good there. I'll take a couple more wraps behind it just to make sure it really props up. There we go. And then we'll trim that just past the length of the hook shank, like so. And you can prop it back up and then we'll whip finish behind our weed guard. Really pull that tight and you can see that kind of props your weed guard up. Um, you really, really want that. I like that 25 pound weed guard for in and out of thick grass. And if you ever beat mangroves with this fly, um, you can strip it out. Any little bit of final trimming you need here, you can put some glue on the eyes or on the front of the, the fly if you'd like to. And that is, ladies and gentlemen, your badger tail shrimp.